my name is Brian Vickers. I'm a program manager at Bureau Veritas, and today we're going to talk about barcoding. If you're doing an inventory of your assets, it's a really good time to start thinking about doing barcoding. So uh, why would you do barcoding? So there's a lot of reasons to do it. Uh, first, it allows you to, if you have a CMMS platform, to charge uh, all of your hours and your effort and your energy towards the same asset. There's no confusion. Um, for a lot of CMMS platforms, they have a mobile application, so with an iPad or a smartphone, uh, you can scan the barcode, which will tell you when does a technician check in and check out of that asset, so you can track their time. Uh, but also for the technician, we'll pull up all the work order history uh, and the pertinent facts about it. And some CMMS platforms even have the relevant replacement parts uh, or the um, preventative maintenance, you know, filters and belts and that kind of information as well. It just depends on the platform. So having uh, a quick scannable uh, barcode is really, really effective. If you send a technician to the field and they had to look up information, maybe on a big Excel sheet or off a piece of paper, if, if they have to do something 10 minutes a day, that is a week's worth of time over the course of a year. So any amount of time you can save a technician is, is money in the bank. Uh, it's time saved. So uh, if if you do decide to do barcoding, there's a lot of considerations. The barcoding world is a pretty extensive one. So uh, we do a tremendous amount of barcoding and so we kind of see it in a couple different flavors. So just very simply, uh, barcodes can either come uh, in vinyl, so it's sort of like a very standard kind of sticker uh, like this. These are what's called 1D barcodes, like you might see on the back of a bag of chips or something like that. Um, and then they also come uh, in this sort of thicker credit card type thickness and these are metallic, so these are laser printed on uh, metallic. Why do I want one versus the other? Uh, so I would use vinyl for interior applications um, and I would use metallic for anywhere that's heat generating uh, or is exposed to UV because these will fade in the sun very, very quickly. Uh, these are a lot more robust. They're also a lot more expensive. So uh, generally speaking, if I'm in an uh, endeavor on a barcoding exercise, I probably can assume that about two thirds of my interior applications, I can use these vinyl ones, and about a third of them I should use metallic. Um, I also want to use uh, metallic ones in somewhere like a commercial kitchen where things are going to be wiped down repeatedly because the adhesive on these is not exceedingly strong, so these will get uh, wiped off over time. In addition to these, and these are both the 1D style barcodes, uh, which means that if I scan it, it will, it will come up with the number, the same number that's printed on them. Uh, we also have uh, QR codes, sometimes called 2D barcodes, which look like this. It's a series of dots. Um, why these are interesting is they can actually code significantly more information, like a website URL. So if you have a CMS platform where every one of your assets has its own web page, which some of them do, and I scan this, if I have a mobile enabled smart device, uh, this will take them directly to that web page with all the information on it. So, and this can either be done at the same time as inventory or it can be done retroactively afterwards. Uh, we do most of ours at the same time, so we're linking the asset uh, with its history uh, as we're going through doing the inventory. But it can be done retroactively after an inventory has been completed. And these come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and corresponding costs. So uh, you can get uh, very simple or you can get pretty complex with them. Um, you can also uh, print some of these with things like the asset's name, like Air Handler 1 or AHU 1 or the building name, uh, but that would require you to first go do an inventory and then get the barcodes printed and then bring them back, which for long-term maintenance of your barcoding system is a little bit more problematic because if you ever replace that one asset, you'll have to go get one barcode printed. Um, so barcodes can get pretty expensive, but there's an economy of scale. So if you buy them like we do, tens of thousands at a time, and this is a sleeve of 500 metallic ones, uh, they're significantly cheaper than if you just go out and buy 20 or 30 or 50 custom printed. Uh, additionally, the more custom information you want on it, the more expensive it'll be as well. So um, that's sort of the basics. If I'm gonna do barcoding, there's a couple considerations about where do I place the barcode. So we tend to place the barcode as close to the data plate of the asset as possible. Uh, that's a good standard so that anytime I send a technician, they go, where's the barcode? It's as close to the data plate as we could put it. Um, and so that's a good rule of thumb. Certainly don't have to follow it. Uh, one place that we would do the opposite of that would be on a very sunny roof. We might put it on the shady side or the north side of an asset just to limit the UV exposure. But generally speaking, that's a, a good best practice. We also wouldn't apply it directly onto something that generates a lot of heat 
because the heat will wear down the adhesive and it'll fall off and it negates the whole advantage of having a barcoding system in the first place. So uh, the world of barcoding is a pretty complex, very deep kind of world. We do a lot of it, so we've had a lot of experiences. We've learned um, both proactively and trial by fire on some of these. Uh, so we're more than happy to share our knowledge with anyone that's interested and to help them do barcoding either on their own or have us do it.